Hey guys, this is the Baron's Finest, uh, getting you a heal deck profile. I realize I haven't done one of these in a long time. I've been busy between graduation, job hunting, etc, etc. But this past weekend we did have the NAWCQ, uh, and I decided to play Zark Magicians because I wasn't comfortable with Zoo, like, any variant. I felt that if I just played Zoo, I would just go on tilt from playing the mirror too much and then not knowing how to play the mirror because I admit to being a very inexperienced Zoo player. Uh, so I played this instead because I at least feel comfortable with magicians as a whole. I more or less like understood like mentalities behind a lot of the magician stuff in the deck, and I had a good time. Uh, overall, my losses were actually not really to even like me not playing Zoo. Uh, I lost a lot to D Barrier, and more or less like all my games uh, had the same result. Where game one, I admit to losing to my own misplay. Game 2, they scoop after my first turn just because I make a board they can't deal with. And then game 3, I either get de-barriered, anti-spelled, or imperial ordered. But you know, you can only do so much in this game. So regardless, uh, I had a good time overall though. Uh, and for people who are wondering my matchups, uh, I put against two pure zoo variants, one true Draco. The I'm, I, mean, it wasn't, I don't believe it was true Draco zoo. I didn't see any zoo cards and I didn't. And I'm pretty sure he was just like, playing the Demise build. And then uh, I played against the a Zoo Magician Mirror, which, good game, I admit that was probably the closest one, but you know, getting debated sucks, but we're going to go and get started on the deck profile as soon as I show you guys the cool stuff that I wound up getting as well. Uh, my dice was actually the water dice, which I find funny considering I almost played Mermail at the event, uh, and then these sleeves, which I admit are gorgeous, and then the Spiral Mat, which I know a lot of people are 50-50 on. But regardless, we're going to go and get in the deck profile, and we're going to go and get just do a quick uh, cut, just so that way we have a better setup. Also, as a quick note, because I did forget to mention it uh, in the last little segment, uh, there are a couple proxies. I did have to borrow some cards, so I'll go and explain those as we go along. Uh, and I will say right now, this is not the best build. Uh, I did listen to a friend on some card choices that I strongly disagree with after playing in the main event. But we're going to go ahead and uh, talk about some of the changes I would have made. Uh, and I'll profile this again eventually, probably post link format. This will be one of the last uh, three real Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profiles I upload for pre-link format. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, to start off with, we played three copies of Astrograph Sorcerer. This card is insane. I love this card. Uh, it is actually a hand trap, which I think is awesome. Uh, this is the only way you actually summon Zark. Uh... Strong card. I wish it was a Magician, so you had easier access into it, but oh well. Uh, but for these art components, we had three copies of Double Iris. Uh, card is insane. Also, as a ruling, uh, because I did wind up learning this the hard way, and now I think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, you cannot activate its Pendulum Effect first turn, because it's similar to the Megal Megalo ruling where like you can't sack to do a second attack if you don't have a Battle Phase first turn. Uh, and then three copies of Black Fang. This card is amazing. It's one of the two ways along with, uh, well, it's not only one of three ways because you also have Double Iris, but one of, along with Purple Poison, of how you can play around your opponent's strikes and stuff. Such a strong card. And then, of course, we have to play a Garnet, quote-unquote, to play Zark, and we play the one White Wing, which, honestly, this card is not terrible. Uh, the Pendulum Effect under cards like Pendulum Call is really cool because it just gives you a free protection randomly. On top of that, it being a tuner was really helpful. Uh, this was actually my fourth tuner in the deck, so I was really glad I played the one white wing. Uh, so that's it for at least the Zark component of the deck. Uh, we're not done with the pendulums though, where we had played triple Skull Corvette Joker. Uh, I actually did side one of these out a lot because I just wanted the extra card to side in. Uh, but it wasn't bad. I didn't really miss the, uh, the extra Joker whenever I sided it out. Uh, three copies of Wisdom Eye. Such a good card. Oh my lord, I love this card. I'm so happy this card's a three again. Uh, then three Harmonizings. Harmonizing is a really good card. It's so much of a playmaker that I admit, like, it made me strongly want to consider the second Oath, but I just wound up not. Uh, Oath we cut down to one last minute. And I admit, I agree with the one Oath. I think one is better than two. Uh, and then... For our only two non pendulum monsters, we played the one Maxi because Maxi is a good card. And then for an engine that my friend told me to play, 
because he apparently tested it before and that's and he was kept saying it was really good really good really good i absolutely hated it i went on talking to people he tested with and they all said that he even said in testing it was really bad so i'm a little upset at that he told me to play it but we played one alistair the invoker and then one invocation this is one of the cards i had to borrow uh the theory behind this is because time star can search it uh it gives you access into the four like the four fusions fortified depending on how many you want to play uh, and I didn't even like my fusion lineup. I wish I played the win one. I really wanted to play the win one, but I just didn't. Uh, so honestly, like these two came out all day. I wouldn't play them again. And the only time I even resolved the fusion, I drew both the invocation and the Alistair. And I drew the invocation first. Uh, for the spells, we played one star pendulum graph. Well, technically, invocation's also a spell, but you know, we're not counting that card. Uh, but one star pendulum graph. Uh, this card is actually really insane. I like this card a lot. I think this is one of the better cards. Uh, one Regeki. Two copies of Pot of Desires. Uh, I like Pot of Greed. I've said. This card's good. Uh, Double Duelist Alliance. Uh, some people were telling me to play three. I just don't like the fact that this card's a hard ones per turn. If it wasn't, I would definitely play three. But, what can you do? Um, you do have some targets. You have both the Pendulum Graphs. You have Double Iris. Uh, you have Pendulum Call in of itself. Other than that, like, your targets are pretty much limited to just those cards, and that's another reason why I didn't want to play too many Duelist Alliances. Uh, and then we have the Triple Pendulum Call. This never got ashed. This card is amazing. Probably the best, one of the best cards in the deck. It makes your scales also so much stronger because, while it's really a, arguably a bad thing, your scales don't pop themselves. Uh, and then for my traps, I did play five. Uh, I played two copies of Solemn Strike. This card is amazing. Um, does suck in the mirror, though, because if you Solemn Strike their Pendulum Summon, they're going to get effects off anyways. And then uh, the only time I actually striked in the mirror was when they Pendulum Summon to Harmonizing, just so you can get the Harmonizing out of the way. But if you get uh, striked when you Pendulum Summon Black Fang and Harmonizing, revive the Harmonizing Summon your Joker, you make plays. Well, not necessarily something you're joking about. You can do things still. You still have access to plays. Uh, two time pendulum graph. I think this card is also really just strong. The fact that this card is just like on demand removal, and if they try and make it fizzle, uh, you punish them for it. This card is just really good. This is a really good card. I love having this card. Uh, people were telling me to go down to one, but I strongly disagree. The second one got me in there so much, and I just wanted the second one. And then uh, one mirror force. Um, I was playing two before the event, which is one of the cards that I wound up cutting for the invocation stuff. Originally, it was a second Mirror Force and a second Oath, uh, but after playing the event, I'm going to modify my build to play Triple Fairy Tale Luna, because that card is really good. I wish I played it, but you know, you can only do so much. Uh, but that was the main deck. It was 40 cards. Um, also, I was highly considering Drowning in the main, but didn't have the room for it. And we want them just not making room for it on the side. Uh, for the extra, uh, you know what? Nah, we'll save that for last. Uh, one trapeze. I almost had decayed with this. Uh, I almost had a chance to make dark trapeze, but it just didn't come up. Uh, two time star magicians. I don't care for two of this card. I feel like one is more than enough. You, I don't feel like you realistically need the second time star, but it is a good card. Uh, the fact that it does protect your dudes though is really cool because that helps you just make Zark so much easier. Uh, plus, Searching, Astrograph, and this is the card that, in theory, makes Alistair a good card in the stack. Uh, Tornado Dragon, really good. And then my only other rank 4 was Abyss Dweller. Uh, I want to play Carnagorgon. And once the new Savants come out, I'm playing the Dark Rebellion. Uh, for Synchros, we played... Jesus, I keep forgetting spacing. Uh, one Beals, one Scarlight, one Ignister, one Omega, and then one Stardust. Ah... Uh, Really good cards overall. The only, I didn't make uh, Omega or Scarlight. Uh, Omega almost came up a couple times. Scarlight, I might just cut in the future. But at the same time, I do have four extra deck spots I'm tinkering with at the moment because I'm cutting a few fusions. And then those fusions were uh, the two I don't have. I played a Megalanica and uh, Purgatrio. And then my other two were Kaliga. And then Makaba. Um, so the three behind playing these four, Purgatrio and uh, Megalanica, were for Ash Blossom, 
and zoo monsters. I only made uh, Megalanica once because it let me deal with my, or it made me bait out my opponent's strata and then main phase two I could just deal with their board. But that was it. Um, Kaliga I had the chance to make like twice, I think, maybe, but it wasn't the correct play. And then it just got me nowhere. And then Macabre, I didn't even know what it did because then my friend had like a foreign one that I borrowed from most of the event, and then I just like got my own because I want to pick up my Vogue stuff anyways. And then the last card, Zark, almost dropped it so many times, but I was just for some reason always short the Black Fang. I don't know why I would just never had the Black Fang available to me, but this card almost like won me like the three or like two of the games I lost. So, had I been able to drop this, this card is just really good. This card gets even better plus the next set. So, I... And honestly, you're more or less me playing the cards anyways. I feel like White Wing is actually not that terrible of a card. So, I'd keep... I'd just keep playing the Zark. Um, and for the side, uh, two Ghost Ogre. This card's really good. I like this card a lot. Uh, then the one Pulse. Uh, Pulse is a theoretical spell answer to dealing with Masterpiece. So, that's why we played it. Plus, it's a one scale. So that makes it really good. Uh, two of the Dark Kaiju. We specifically played the Dark Kaiju because we still wanted access to the OTK with uh, Trapeze Magician in this card. However, because we didn't play or I didn't play Luna, the OTK was less consistent. Uh, one Dark Hole, just because I needed a 15th card at, this, at the point we were working on my side. Uh, double Chalice. This card is actually really good. I like Chalice a lot. Uh, double Cosmic Cyclone. I decided to send once... Yeah, I just added this in once, and that was about it. Uh, Torrential. This card... Apparently, people kept saying, Oh, I read Torrential, I read Torrential, and... I don't know if Torrential is actually that common in this format. I haven't, like, seen or heard anybody talk about Torrential, like, at all up until that event. To where literally my opponent was like, Yeah, I was reading Torrential, but... I mean, if you read Torrential, then good on you. I'll give you that. Uh, then Double D-Barrier. card is so good. This card is just like, this is the reason I lost. This card just prevented me from winning all day. Uh, and then the last card, which I did also have to borrow, was two under Unending Nightmare. Fantastic card. Play that card. Honestly, God, just play that card. Uh, you need outs to Imperial Order. You need outs to Anti-Spell. You. I honestly wanted to just mainly keep my sideboard uh, monsters and traps, which I wish I stuck to that theory, but... I mean, the spells that I did side were good, but I probably want to play the Dark Hole again. But I think that's actually going to do it for this Dark Profile, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please leave me some feedback. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, and more or less, yeah, that's just how it went. I played two zoos, round one and two. Round three, I played against uh, True Draco. And then round four, I played against... Uh, the magician variant. Um, I mean, the dude was cool. I'm not upset about losing to him. I haven't really. I just know that True Draco Zoo wound up winning Nats. Expected at 10. I think that deck is honestly the best deck. But uh, regardless, I had fun. Uh, my very first NAWCQ. Uh, and I learned some things like don't listen to your friends last second. If you have a gut feeling about something, go with it. And, I mean, that's just more or less like, it. do what you want to do. Play what you're comfortable playing. Uh, obviously, you should try and, like, you should definitely plan for a meta. Also, expect to play a lot of the meta of that format. I admit I underestimated the amount of zoo that was there. I expected it, obviously, to be majority wise zoo, but I thought there was going to be a little bit more true Draco Demise. I was wrong. But, regardless, that's it for now, guys. This is one of the three deck profiles that will be up before the end of... The area, the, ah, the era pre-link format. Uh, the others will be a doppel variant, and then a little surprise. Um, and then we'll have some other videos coming up again, uh, both Yu-Gi-Oh and Vanguard. And in one of the videos, there will actually be a little bit of an update. But that's gonna do for now. And until next time, peace, guys.